Welcome into the San Francisco 49ers report right here on Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and as always, no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for watching the show. This game is done. And it was a brutal one to watch at times, a glorified preseason game to round out the regular season in Week 18 between the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. And honestly, for those of you who paid a lot of money to go to this game, I kind of feel bad for you. The Niners did play their starters early in this game, but Kyle Shanahan very quick to pull them once they realized that they got those necessary reps in to stay somewhat fresh going into the NFL playoffs. They have that first round by, and now San Francisco with finishing the season here, 12 wins on the docket for the 2023 season will prepare for the divisional round of the playoffs because last week with beating the Washington Commanders on the road and with that Eagles loss as Philadelphia lost again today to the Giants, the Niners able to clinch that number one seed and home field advantage in the NFC playoffs. By the way, we're coming to you from Houston, Texas over the last couple of days. We've been here providing coverage for the national championship between Michigan and Washington. So if the show looks and sounds a little bit different, that's why some awesome coverage that you can find under the chat sports umbrella so the final score 21 to 20 Carson Wentz accounting for three touchdowns for the Los Angeles Rams in this game and once San Francisco really pulled all of their starters the backup offensive line really struggled and it was really an opportunity for a lot of the fringe roster types to try to earn roster spots next year for San Francisco as well as the Rams and for Sam Darnold looking to prove that maybe he can be a holdover starter, maybe even a backup for this Niners team in 2024 and for Carson Wentz who was picked up off the scrap heap after a couple of injuries at that Rams quarterback spot, I thought he played well in this game. Now, again, he was doing it against a lot of Niners backups, but he showed me some things. 17-24, 163, two touchdowns and a pick. And the Rams in this game did not play Cooper Cup. Puka Nakua got taken out of this game once he set that rookie record. Aaron Donald, Kyron Williams also not playing. And we saw Cooper Cup on the sideline during the broadcast a couple of times. I will say this Rams team is dangerous going into the playoffs. They will play the Detroit Lions, as we'll talk about coming up here in the 3-6 matchup. They have won 7 of 8. And what Sean McVay has been able to do this year very, very impressive, and Sean McVay in the process with this one-point victory ends the dubious mark of losing nine straight regular season games to Kyle Shanahan and San Francisco. Because this game going in really didn't mean all that much, Brock Purdy did not start, Christian McCaffrey did not play, Niners without Ambry Thomas, and those starters pulled at some point very early in this first quarter. A lot of you don't care about the outcome of this game. So let's look at what you do care about. And that's the first round of the NFC playoffs. The San Francisco 49ers, despite only having 12 wins, get the number one seed and home field advantage. And they won the NFC, and they won the NFC West excuse me, for the second consecutive year. Outside of that, the two through seven positions going into Sunday night football between the Dolphins and the Bills is officially set. The Dallas Cowboys get the number two seed. They have not lost at AT&T Stadium so far this year. 12-5 and five record for them, but because the Niners won the head-to-head -head matchup, they get the tiebreaker. Because the Cowboys in that controversial game two weeks ago beat the Lions, the Lions who won the NFC North for the first time in franchise history, they finished 12-5. and five. They are the three seed. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were able to hold on against the Carolina Panthers despite the New Orleans Saints putting forward their best efforts and dump trucking the Atlanta Falcons. The result of that latter game did not matter. If the Bucs won, they were in, and they won the NFC South. They will play the Philadelphia Eagles, who started the season 10-1. and At one point, they were the number one seed in the NFC. They rounded out the season, and a lot of Niners fans will be happy to hear this, having lost five of six. 
I can't remember a team playing this poorly, looking this poorly going into the playoffs. I think Philadelphia is toast, and frankly, I kind of like Tampa Bay to win that wild card matchup. Rams in that sixth position, they will play the Detroit Lions. That is going to be a fascinating first round game because Matthew Stafford returns to Detroit and the Green Bay Packers, who have owned the Cowboys in a lot of monumental spots in the big dance, that is going to be the 7-2 and two game. The Green Bay Packers able to take care of business against the Chicago Bears. I do want to ask you this, and then we'll get to our sponsor for our postgame show. Who do you want to play in the divisional round of the playoffs? I will say this. For the San Francisco 49ers, the team that I do not want to see is the team that they just played. Now, yes, you might be looking at the scoreboard and say, well, the Niners didn't play anybody and they lost by one, and if Sam Darnold didn't have the most Sam Darnold play ever, maybe San Francisco wins that game. Jake Moody missed a field goal. He missed an extra point. Yes, that's true, but this Rams team is hot. Matthew Stafford has been slinging it. They have a lot of offensive weapons, and their defense has been emerging, and the Rams didn't play a lot of people either. So who do you want to play in the divisional round? Drop that team name down below in the comment section right now. Really appreciate prize picks for supporting the show all throughout this year and being our sponsor on this fine Sunday. Hope you're all having a great Sunday, by the way, as the regular season is officially in the rear view after the Sunday night football game. Easy and exciting daily fantasy sports. And as we shift gears to the NFL playoffs, make sure you sign up with Prize Picks, the largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America, and get a $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use the code CLNS. How it works is you pick two or more players and you choose more or less on their projected stat lines. And you can combine NFL and NBA picks and go hybrid picks with all of your selections. Or since we're in Houston for the national championship, we're going to be at the game at NRG Stadium between Michigan as Jim Harbaugh looks to win a natty against Kalen DeBoer, who looks to win a natty as well in this matchup between two undefeated teams. I'm also looking forward to this quarterback matchup, but also all of the NFL prospects in this game, like J.J. McCarthy and Blake Corum. McCarthy, more than 23 and a half rushing yards. I like that. I'm not sure about Blake Corum, more than 100 and a half rushing yards, but you look at the quarterback position here, Michael Penix Jr., this Washington offense has three wide receivers who could get taken in the first two rounds of the draft, and he can throw with timing, anticipation, really good arm strength, more than 300 and a half passing yards for him, not too shabby there, and J.J. McCarthy, more than 200 and a half passing yards. Those are the selections that I like for the game that I will be at. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Use that code CLNS for that deposit match of $100, and to simplify that, you put in $100, you get $100 back. We really care about the faithful, so we're going to put that link down below in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. So we continue to move forward and progress in our postgame show live here on the San Francisco 49ers report to everybody who tuned into our postgame show. Really appreciate the support. That is 17 games for the Niners and 17 watch parties. So that's why you subscribe to the channel for year-round and daily updates on San Francisco. Early in this game, some takeaways because you can't really have a lot of takeaways from this game because Kyle Shanahan played it very conservatively. He wanted to get his starters in the game. He wanted to get them some reps. And he didn't want to have three weeks between that Washington game and the divisional round because that's when Russ sets in. And he pretty much said that the one player I do not want playing in this game is quarterback Brock Purdy because if you were to risk injury to Purdy and if he were to go down, you would be screwed. Brandon Ayuk looked really good. I thought that Elijah Mitchell for the second consecutive week was able to run hard and with a lot of physicality. We saw a couple of carries for Jordan Mason. What really bothered me is the depth pieces specifically at wide receiver for this Niners team and them failing to really show up in this game. Chris Conley, a couple of bad drops. Ray Ray McLeod had his practice window open this week, activated from IR, coming off that surgery. I wanted to see more from him, and I know that he's a player who's knocking off some rust, but I wanted to see them rise up to the occasion and take advantage of their opportunities because I thought Sam Darnold was able to do that. 
pocket mobility, a really strong arm. He was able to make some really athletic plays, and that is always the case with Sam Darnold. But with the good comes the bad. We talked about that with Darnold this past week where he makes a really highlight-worthy play, and then he makes a play that leaves you just scratching your head, dumbfounded, at the inability to just be a consistent quarterback in this league. And then you look elsewhere for the San Francisco team. Offensive line continues to be a massive issue. And it's not just the starting unit. I thought Spencer Burford had a bounce back game at right guard. I think that John Feliciano should be the starting guard moving forward. And I think he is going to be. He didn't play in this game because he was banged up for an extended period there. Aaron Banks, Trent Williams, that's the left side of the line of scrimmage. Jake Brendel is going to be your center. I want to see John Feliciano at right guard. And I want to see Colton McKivitz at right tackle. But once the starters for this offensive line were pulled and they did not play, Sam Darnold had no time to throw. As soon as he would get to the stem of his drop, he was pressured, and guys were in his face. And when you look forward to the NFL playoffs, you're going to be playing against some really quality opponents who have some really good defensive lines and some really good edge rushers. And what unglued the Niners in the playoffs last year? Seattle in the wild card round. They were able to get some pressure on Brock Purdy and take advantage of this porous Niners offensive line. In that game against the Dallas Cowboys, I thought Dallas really dominated the trench play with their defensive line. And then against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles who had 70 sacks last year, number one in the NFL, I thought they dominated San Francisco's front as well. So going into the playoffs, the number one concern for me with this football team is not Brock Purdy having three weeks between starts from the Washington game to the divisional round. And he's going to have to avoid rust. Niners are going to have to get off to a fast start. And he can't turn the football over against that divisional round. It is this Niners offensive line which is the biggest concern for this team. And the only reason that the Niners get knocked off in the NFC playoffs, in my opinion, is if they beat themselves and if the offensive line gets dominated. Now make sure you subscribe to us here. On the San Francisco 49ers report during our watch party, producer Jack Lauderay able to crush it on the ones and twos. Producer Brett and boss man Brett was here as well. We surpassed 107,000 subscribers. If you want entertaining, informative, insightful Niners coverage every single day year round, this is your go-to spot. We'll round out with this real quick. Niners offense in totality against Los Angeles, 300 yards of total offense, 5.2 yards per play. Darnold able to sling it 26 times, completed 16 of those passes for a buck 75. You could tell that both the Rams and the Niners did not want to unveil anything because they know the familiarity between these two teams. Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan, they know their tendencies, but they know that they can meet in the second round of the playoffs. So San Francisco with a simplified game plan nothing really creative they ran the football a lot early in this game and a lot of those were just straight runs outside zones keeping it very simplified for San Francisco because they don't want to show anything to the Rams who might be a second round opponent so that's going to round out our post game show right here on the San Francisco 49ers report keep it locked here on Monday I understand that we're in Houston for the College Football National Championship between Michigan and Washington, but our coverage does not stop, and we'll provide you with some great coverage on this Monday and then every day this week coming up because even though the Niners are on a bye week, our coverage does not have a bye right here on the Niners Report.